I love that I have like the super girly, flirty sort of makeup look and I'm just wearing my Vince Staples concert tee. But I mean, what are you gonna do? Hello, and welcome back to my channel. If not back, then just welcome. If it is your first time here, I would love it if you would click on the subscribe button and join me on my YouTube journey. So a while ago, I went out and I bought the Narvina palette and I haven't used it. So let's use it today. But let's, I mean, I'm going to use it and you can watch me use it if you want to. I feel like I should stop rambling and I should put on this makeup, especially because I have to leave for work sooner rather than later. Okay, so I really don't know what I'm going to do with it. I look. Do people even still care about the Narvina palette? Makeup releases happen so fast and so frequently. I feel like it's really hard to keep up and for me personally it's hard for me to differentiate between what I actually want and what I feel like I should get for either collection or reviewing purposes. There's also that pressure as an up and coming YouTuber to get that big video that could really spark your career so every release feels like a potential like double dutch jump in but that's also like very expensive. So I'm taking Eccentric which is this orange shade here. My ramen's going off in the background by the by. I reviewed this brush a couple of videos ago and I was talking about its flat fluffiness and how I like how it was shaped and the wedginess of it and blah blah blah. The shape didn't hold up after washing and I'm very gentle when I wash my brushes. Yeah. You know what, now that I'm thinking about this, I had a look at my head and I didn't want to put this color on first, but oh well, here we are. Am I the only person that eats ramen because they like it and not because they have to? And if I am, what does that say about my taste buds? I think it's because I ate ramen a lot growing up, like top ramen, especially for breakfast. And so it just translates into a breakfast food in my head and it's breakfast time, so. Most of the time when I eat ramen, I don't eat it with the package, with the little seasoning packet and stuff. I doctor it up and make my own broth and I mostly just use the top ramen noodles for the noodles. But sometimes, such as today, <laughs> I'm just like, mmm, pack of soy flavored ramen sounds delightful. I'm going to dip into Love, which is this pink shade here. And I'm just gonna put that a little bit lower in the crease. Yeah, I wanted to do this in reverse. Dang it, I wanted to do love on top. Finally, you put my. And I wanted to do eccentric, like underneath that. I gotta start turning my Bluetooth speaker off before I start filming. But I forgot that that's what I wanted to do and so now I'm doing it in reverse and I don't hate it, but I don't love it. This is the um, only Anastasia palette I have outside of Modern Renaissance. And I feel like a lot of people have mentioned how since Modern Renaissance, their shadows have just gotten more and more powdery. And this is like insanity. Like this is an insane amount of kick up. I don't mind kick up. I don't mind fallout. It usually doesn't bother me, but I feel like so much of the product is being wasted because See if I can get this to focus. Like you see all of that, and I'm not a swirler, I'm a tapper. I don't like dig my brush into my shadow. I'm just like, <sighs> so I don't know how I feel. Um, I love how it looks. Like these are blending together so beautifully. It looks really nice, but that amount of kick up feels like a waste because I can't use that. And I feel like that's a lot. I 100% bought this palette for the shimmers. They are so soft. They are literally the softest powder shadows I have ever touched in my entire life. And they swatch so beautifully. I know that swatches don't always translate to actual performance of the shadow, but they just feel so nice. I'll just swatch a few so you can see. This is dazzling. It's like a beautiful taupey shade, which is like kind of my jam right now. Here is Rose Gold, which is, you know, Rose Gold. This is Celestial, which is one of the purple shimmers. And they're just so soft. If it's not, like, not too much of like a thing, I highly recommend going into your local Sephora and just touching these because they're just, they're so nice. They're so nice. 
I think I'm actually just going to take the brush that came with the palette and I'm going to go into Summer, which is just like this beautiful pale gold shade. And I'm going to put that on my lid. Okay. Wow. This is so pretty. You guys, I need to talk to you. Seriously. Can we just... Okay, can you focus? Thanks, camera. Can we? I mean, I have never used a press shadow that stunning in all of my days. That whole like kick up problem is not as present in the shimmers, which I'm glad of. Okay, so now that I've done that on just the inner portion of my eye, I'm gonna go in with the same brush and I'm gonna go into rose gold. Rose gold. Oh, that's actually a lot of... Okay. Um, I've never used a pressed metallic shadow that is so impactful before in my life. I'm, I'm not over it. And this one is just as pretty. Mm, rose gold seems to be a bit more chunky than summer. Not in a bad way. Like, not in a way that I can't work around it. These almost, when you swipe them with the brush, like almost look like a cream. I don't understand this formula in the like most positive way that I could mean that I did not understand. The real test will be when I go back into that love color to see if I can like really soften the the line between the between the metallic and the satin matte because I think love is a satin color because there's like a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not shiny like it's not metallic it's not glittery glittery i think it's just they made it a satin so that it's more emollient as opposed to if it were a true matte i feel like it would be a bit more chalky and harder to blend so i feel like the sheen and love and soul look like they are just there to help them blend better i'm gonna go back in with that love brush and that love color so now i'm just going to soften the like shimmery part. This kick up. Oh, the amount of love that I have for these metallic shadows. I have equal amounts of disdain for this satin formula because I just don't understand why it is so powdery. Okay, going into eccentric. Yeah, which seems to be more of a truer matte and not the same problem. And once again, I'm just going over back over the work that I've already put down just so that it is visible. I have a decent amount of fallout on my face from the metallic shadows, which fallout doesn't bother me because I always do my eyes first and my face second, but if you are a reversal kind of person, then that might be an issue. I'm gonna clean up this fallout before I go into the lower lash line because I don't wanna smear that metallic shadow around necessarily. Now that my fallout is cleaned up for the most part, I'm gonna go in with love. I'm taking love and I'm putting that underneath my eye and it's not gonna show up because these dark circles though, but it's fine, we'll make it work. And then with that same brush, I'm gonna go, on, go into eccentric. Okay, and then for a finishing touch, I'm gonna go in with this absolutely ridiculously tiny square detailer brush from Real Techniques. Look at how small, look at how tiny, look at how little. Oh, it's such a little baby. And I'm gonna go into Summer, that gold shade that I used on this part. And I'm gonna put that on the closest part of my lower lash line, my waterline. And then before I finish up with my eyes, I'm gonna take the accent brush from Real Techniques and I'm gonna go into Dreamer, which is this color here. It matches my nails like pretty spot on, but like metallic. Anyway, I'm gonna go into Dreamer and I'm gonna use that for my inner corner highlight. We on a ultra light beam. We on a ultra light beam. All right, now that I'm done with the eye portion, I'm gonna go off camera and do my face routine. All right, so I'm back. Base on, brows on, lashes on. I also did my highlight. I love this highlight. Okay, so now for my blush, I'm going to mix two of the Glossier 
Cloud Paint Blushes. This one is Puff, and it's like a paler pink color. Then this one is Storm, and it's one of their newer shades, one of their more pigmented, more saturated shades that looks absolutely stunning on darker skin tones. The Cloud Paint Blushes are my absolute all-time favorite blush formula. I think it's because you can customize the shade to be whatever you want it to be. This is Puff by itself. And then I'm just going to mix a little bit of Storm into that so that it has a more rosy hue to it. So this is a new custom shade. I also love the finish of this blush. It's very, very sheer. It's hard to over apply it. And the finish of it is like dewy. It has that signature Glossier, your skin but better sort of finish to it. So it looks like such a natural blush. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that in with my fingers. I'm just gonna tap so that I don't lose that color. Now for my lips, I'm gonna go in with Max Morning Coffee Lip Pencil, which is this really like pretty rosy nude color. It's similar to ColourPop's Grunge, but it's not as deep. Now I'm gonna fill in the whole lip, just doing the outline. And then I'm gonna kind of fill in just the sides here. And then I'm gonna go over top of that with the Fenty Gloss. Let's see if I can remember this by heart. The Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb and Fenty Glow. Boom, nailed it. It's only been out for a year. Uh, my lips are so dry. I haven't been putting on my chapstick before I go to bed at night and it has been a mistake. All right, I'm looking a little extra shiny because I went ahead and I set my face with my setting spray. I'm just gonna tap to decrease some of that shine. So here is the final look. I'll get a little closer so you can see the eyes a little better. Here's a final look on the eyes. I am so stunned with the quality of these metallic shadows. I try to be really mindful when recommending products because I know how expensive makeup is, but I am not exaggerating when I say I have never used a metallic shadow like the ones in this palette. And I have the Modern Renaissance palette. So I have used their metallic shadows before. I just feel like the formula has changed and these are just so much more foiled looking and so much more metallic looking. They aren't very glittery. These look so beautifully reflective. The overall palette, however, I'm not crazy about the kickback on that satin shadow. That will drive me bananas for the rest of my days. But the pigmentation and the actual blendability of the shadows is really, really nice. I'm excited to play with this palette a little bit more. It's definitely pushing me outside of my comfort zone. And I love makeup that pushes me outside of my comfort zone. I've recently fallen in love with cool tone shadows as they make me feel tre bouge. But this is more like cool pastel. So that's another step outside of my general realm of comfort. I'm so excited to get into that dazzling shade, that like taupe shade. I can make some very luxe looks with this palette, but I wouldn't rush out and get it. It's not something I feel like you need in your makeup collection. It's not something that I feel like is going to make or break your eyeshadow looks. Anyway, yeah, so this is my look. As always, if you have made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you so, 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 so very much. I appreciate you from the very bottom of my heart. In the comments below, tell me what you think about this look. Tell me what you think about the Norvina palette. Tell me if you're interested in buying it or not. All right, till next time. Bye, folks.